Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about City of Heavenly Fire, which came out, I think, three days ago, but I'm already done and I have notes. So I decided to break this up between the good, the bad, and the ugly of the book. The book doesn't have a lot of bad or ugly, but, uh, just some things, just some things. So first for the good, I want to talk about Simon, because the beginning of the book Simon was just like bitching about how much it sucks to be a vampire and how he's not going to be able to do anything because he's immortal and will forever look like he's 16 years old. And it was always really depressing thinking that everyone who matters to Simon is going to eventually die and it's just going to be him, Magnus, and Raphael being the immortal instruments. <laughs> That's a joke I saw once on Tumblr. Credit to whoever wrote that. I don't know who did. Anyway, so it was always really depressing, but I kind of had already accepted it. But when the book started and Simon like was totally messed up over it, and I realized that the book was going to end in two ways. Either Simon was going to die or Simon wasn't going to be a vampire anymore. So I was like holding out the entire book like Simon's not ending this book as a vampire or he's going to die. So there was like um, the part where Jem or Brother Zachariah was healed by Jace's Heavenly Fire. I was so convinced that the Heavenly Fire was going to have some sort of play in Simon becoming human again. And it didn't. But... The way that it happened I really love because I love that Simon is just constantly seen making these grand sacrifices for his friends. This one he really did not have a choice like what they were going to do, kill Magnus, like no, so. But Simon's selfless, you know, and he did not let anyone argue, he was like no, I'm doing this. And I love Jace had his back in that moment and was just like, this is Simon's choice. And I don't know, I just thought Simon's whole arc throughout the book was amazing. and. Him and Isabel were amazing as per usual and it was so heartbreaking when he lost his memories and Isabel's like, it's like he never even loved me at all and I'm just like, you guys. <laughs> but it's okay because Simon's going to become a shadow hunter. I'm so excited. I didn't even think that that was going to happen. I just figured, like when Simon lost his memories, I was like, okay. So Simon better get his memories back because it's just, you know, he's always going to think he's just this normal human guy who hasn't done all these amazing things. Like Simon totally, from book one to book six, I feel like changed immensely, not in personality, but like in his view of himself because he just became a hero and I couldn't bear Simon losing that. It's like Donna, Doctor Who all over again and I'm so glad that he's gonna get his memories back when he becomes a shadow hunter and him and Clary are gonna be para, para body, para body, it's just para bodies isn't it? When I read it I never got that and then I tried to say it out loud. Para, para body, uh, I don't know. Total star of the book was Alec Lightwood. I didn't, I've never been that insane about Alec. I like liked him, but first few books I wasn't crazy about him because he was really mean to Clary. I still remember the first book, like he was like physically, like he like pushed her against a wall, right? I don't, I have read the book five years ago, but so I always have been a little mm -hmm, about Alec and I've always been a little mm -hmm, about Alec and Magnus just because Magnus is like 400 something years old and Alec is like 18 and he's also never been in a relationship before and it's like a really weird power dynamic that I never liked there that like Magnus was like this ancient thing who had had s several and several and several and several like lovers and stuff and he was really experienced and Alec was this little baby faced guy just coming out like not knowing anything but in this book I did appreciate their relationship a lot more than I ever did. Still not totally insane about it but I like them you know I'm glad they're happy together. <laughs> But Alec was just amazing in this book. Alec was like holding it together even though Magnus was captured and Alec was just sassy in everyone. Love sassy Alec. So Alec, whoa. I love sassy Alec Lightwood. Um, Alec was just great. I just feel like he just, every single scene he was in was just pure gold when he like let Simon take his blood and they were having that like bro talk like, you know, don't mess up my sister but she can kind of take care of herself which I'm sure Alec knows. But I don't know. I just really loved Alec in this book. Um, when it comes to Jason Clary, I never have much to say. I really like Jason Clary, but I feel like they've been s through so much at this point that like, you know, it's not like they changed much in this book. They kind of been the same they've been since like City of Glass. But um, I do like that their dynamic has become more of a team than it, it used to just be like Jason being like, Clary, stay here. Clary, do this. And now it's a lot more like they work together and I love how it was like their plan together for taking down uh, Sebastian slash Jonathan and I love that they have more of a team dynamic now. I also love that Jace bought a condom with him to help just Jace. I love Isabel. Isabel's like, 
Simon's my favorite character, like Simon's here, but Isabel's like right there. And I feel so bad for her because I feel like Max's death affected her more than everyone else, which obviously because she was there with him when he died and she feels like it was her fault. And our whole thing plot line with her parents and thinking that like her dad just wants to leave now because Max is gone and now there's nothing holding him to their family anymore and that's so depressing. And Isabel is just a strong character and I loved her throughout the entire book and yeah her. Um, adding on to the good is I, the sassiness and the sarcastic quips in this book were amazing. I just found myself cracking up the entire time. Simon's bad. I knew it. I knew it. I think everyone knew this, but like I knew it. Like how they always had this running gag, how they didn't have a name for the band, and I was like, their band's gonna be called the Mortal Instruments. I know it's gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. And then when he gives her the, the, the Caleb's Clary, the flyer, and she's just like, oh. And it's the Mortal Instruments, and they're just like, yes! And I'm just like, yes! And yes, they finally named the band, and it's the Mortal Instruments, and that's just a great running gag that I'm glad it got tied up. And it was awesome. I loved that after Sebastian was hit with the, like, the sword with the heavenly fire in it, um, and he turned back to Jonathan for a little bit, and it was really, really awesome, like, way to kind of see how Valentine really screwed him up. It was really interesting. I don't know. I just liked it. And I like that he still died though, because it was like, pff, no, you're not gonna live on like as this little brother or older brother thing. Like, no. And, but I'm really glad that we did get to see a glimpse of Jonathan. I also loved that Clary really like <coughs> took hold of her name. Like it's really interesting, and I love how Cassandra Clare does this, how like just because Clary has an evil father, it's not like that gets ignored and she's not just like yeah, my dad, ugh, no, we're gonna forget he exists. Like, she acknowledges it and she's saying, like, the Morganstern name, I want to carry it on because it is my name. And so what? My dad was evil and sucked, but I can bring good to this name. And, oh my god, Jace, uh, Jace Lightwood, Wayland, Herondale, D D Morganstern, Jace has just had so many names. But I'm glad he said all on Herondale, which is his real name. Even though the Lightwood one was really touching, but I think it is important to carry on the Herondale name. Another thing for the good, group dynamic was amazing. When Alec, Isabel, Jace, Clary, and Simon are all like walking as hell together, just my heart. I was like, you guys are such cuties. They're like holding hands and like they're just sarcasm bouncing off each other. It's just great. I love them. Um, one last thing for the good is Maya. I really liked Maya in this book. I usually, I always like Maya, but I never really pay much attention to her. But she really held her own in this book. She like fought that asshole werewolf whose name I don't remember and won even though Bat was losing and she took over for Luke for a while and she warned the shadow hunters and Maya's like she got a good head on her shoulders because she like knows she has shadow hunter fr friends so she doesn't have that down world of perspective that all these shadow hunters are evil. I really loved Maya and I think that she's gonna be really instrumental in bridging the gap between the down worlders and the shadow hunters. Now we have to get to the bad. I hate to say it because like I personally don't find this bad but from like a literary standpoint this was kind of bad. The character deaths. She got us so worried six characters you know by name are going to die and I thought that meant like six like relatively important characters. Only like one main-ish character died and that was Jordan. I <laughs> I have a lot of problems with the way Jordan's death was handled. I understand they had a lot more stuff to worry about, but like, it was kind of, all right. The fact that like Maya was gonna break up Jordan is fine, but I kind of wish that had been established in the last book that Maya was feeling like, eh, about her and Jordan, because it, it kind of just felt like a cop out to get it be like, oh yeah, Maya's not gonna be destroyed that her boyfriend next, she was gonna break up with him anyway. Don't worry. And it again, just like the stakes in this book weren't very high. Like I don't understand when people are like, oh my god, City of Heavenly Fire, I'm gonna cry forever. And I'm like, why? The only bad thing that really happened was that Jordan died, no one even gave a fuck, so it was fine. And that Simon lost his memories, but he's gonna get them back. Like, what happened that was so sad? I don't... And that's fine, because I think that Mortal Instruments actually has a very, like, happy tone. Well, like, Infernal Devices had a more tragic ending. But like, it always had a more sad undertone to it. Well, Mortal Instruments always has had this like sarcastic, quippy, like easiness about it that it's not out of the ordinary that none of the main characters died. 
I only went into it thinking that someone was because there was like this little quote on Cassie's thing like, oh, this is a snippet from the book and I don't even think it was in it. Where she was like, oh, all this time I spent trying to convince you that I wasn't in love with you and now here I am dying in your arms. I was like, crap, 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 Magnus or Isabel's gonna die because I was like, either it's gonna be Magnus to Alec or Isabel to Simon and I can't handle this and I was like freaking out. Nope. I think it probably was supposed to be Magnus and Alec, but I guess she cut it or changed it. Unless I missed it. I might have missed it. So I was thinking this whole time that like a main character was gonna die, so I went into it thinking that. And the main character was Jordan. And no one really cared. Like everyone was kind of like, ugh. Oh. Like Simon was like, oh my god, it's my fault. And Maya was like, ugh. Oh, I was gonna break up with him. I feel like a jerk. And I was just kind of like, you know, it's kind of sad. But like Jordan always really helped you guys, you know? Alright. It just kind of brushed over it very quickly, and I wasn't crazy about how the one main character death we did have was brushed over. But yeah, I know a lot of people are complaining that the stakes weren't really high, and it didn't really feel like a grand finale, and I feel like it's okay for two reasons. Like, one, the stakes weren't really high because I'm just a selfish child, and I didn't want any of the main characters to die, so I'm kind of just thrilled that none of them did, other than Jordan, but I didn't really pay attention to Jordan. Poor Jordan. But, and it was fine the way the book ended, but it kind of felt more like how like City of Lost Souls would have ended rather than how the final book in the series would have ended, if you know what I mean. Like, it would have been a great ending if it wasn't the last book. But I'm okay with it because it's also kind of setting up for the next book, like Dark Artifices, so they couldn't wrap up everything like with the Fair Folk because that's all going to become relevant next, like, next series. And I think that's why I feel like Cassandra doesn't have the strongest finales other than City of Glass. That was, I thought was really good. But the end of you know, Clockwork Princess, and then this, like, battle-wise, it isn't insane, because she's always setting up for the next thing, and her books are not actually as battle-oriented as you'd think they would be, they're more character-oriented, so I kind of was okay with it, but I still would label it under the bad. And now we have the ugly. Um... So, I love Cassandra Clare, I think she's an amazing writer, but one thing she is not really great at is the art of subtlety. She's always been, it's so always been my problem with Jason Clary, it was just shoved down your throat because every five seconds it's like, I see the way you look at Jace, you're so in love with him. I see the way that you look at Clary, you're so in love with her. Your guys' love is real because the way you look at each other. I'm like, who says that to people? I have never in my life been like, oh my god, the way he just looked at her, he's in love with her. I should go up and tell them. Like, no, first of all, I never even know it. Sometimes I'm like, that dude's probably into that girl, or maybe not. I don't, I don't, I don't know, because I don't, I don't know them. Or even if I do know them. Like, I don't know. The way that I'm like, oh, he's in love with you, would be more like, look at all the stuff he does for you, man. Like, he's totally in love with you. Not like, I see the way he looks at you. I don't know. It's something like Cassandra Clare does a lot, and I'm always like, alright. Like, there's a scene with Emma, who I loved, by the way. Um, Emma and Clary, and then Jace comes in, and then... Clary's like, that's my friend, and I was like, that's your boyfriend. And I was like, why? He's like, I saw the way he looked at you. I'm like, why? Why do we always go back to this? <sighs> I would, like, I feel like I would have rather when she was like, he's my friend, and like, he's your boyfriend. Why? Because you're blushing. Like, that is something, like, would actually happen, but the way he looks at you thing, she just uses it way too much. And following with the lack of the art of subtlety, the parallels between the Infertile Devices and the World Instruments were really fun, but they were not subtle at all. They were like, I, the quote, I was literally cringing at. It was when Jem's like talking to Jace and he's like, I forgot that you Herondales love so fiercely, more tragically. Like, I don't remember what he was saying, but I was like, what? Like, first of all, we get it. Will and Jace are very similar, but I doubt that every single Herondale is like Will and Jace. Like, why couldn't you just say like, I forgot how much you were like Will, rather than like, I forgot that all Herondales, like, love more intensely than other people. And I'm like, not really, because, I don't know, like, Alex's pretty intense about his love for Magnus. Like, I, Clary is pretty intense about her love for Jace, Luke, and Jocelyn. Like, why is Jace so special? He's not. They all are obsessed with each other in unhealthy ways. And it's the same thing with Will and Tessa and Jem and Tessa. Like, I'm like, what is this thing with, like, you Herondales? I don't know. Like, so many of those kind of scenes where, like, they were paralleling Jace to Will were ridiculously too much, and it was really painful, but I loved it anyway, but I'm just saying. So, that's it for me. Uh, that's my City of Heavenly Fire review, and I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you all enjoyed the book. I'll be going to BookCon tomorrow, and I really hope BookTubers are there. Bye!